Today we have a hand from your favorite PokerCoaching.com coach, Matt Affleck. He is here today. We are looking at a hand from a $1,600 buy-in tournament at the win. All right, we open it up under the gun to $1,400, playing $300, $600 in a $1,600 tournament. Chip leader, loose, passive player. Does they chip leader? Yeah, CL, yeah, chip leader. Um, I just put the effective stacks here, so uh -huh. I have 26K. I'm the shortest stack. Uh, loose, passive, probably recreational. It's just, you know, he might be flat in the queen, queen jack offsuit here. You know, he's probably playing too many hands. Okay, then we have a... A player from France who came all the way here, offs the call on the button. Yeah, the only thing that's very noteworthy here is he was definitely considering potentially squeezing, hmm. or he took like 20 seconds to call and was clearly considering other options than calling. So so that either means he was looking to fold, maybe, so he's going to call us some yeah. nonsense, or it means he has a good squeezing hand that's like maybe a squeeze, maybe not. So either like, exactly. a, pretty, like a really good hand, or... A marginalish hand. Yeah, like if, not probably not suited connector. Probably not small and medium pair. Yes, more like a pocket tens, maybe. maybe yeah, like a king queen suited, king jack suited, king ten off suit. Yeah, like that. Ace, yeah, probably okay. not aces, kings, or queens, and probably not, you know, pocket deuces. Interesting read that because like it, yeah. it's, it's a very like if you could line up that that potential maybe squeezing range, but not on a chart, it'd be yep a weird band of hands. And I guess a big tip here is. Everyone likes to not look at their cards until it's their turn. I look at my cards right when I get my turn for this exact reason. Because if he knew what he was going to do when it was his turn, I wouldn't have gotten this tell, which becomes pretty relevant. Funny enough, yeah. again, some players who like really pay attention to the people to the left of them, I never look at my cards first because that may give off, give off something. But if nobody's really paying attention, I just always look immediately and then go quickly. And to be fair, if you know preflop ranges decently well, you know what your bluffs look like, and you just make it yeah. like you would the nuts. So as you know preflop ranges better, we have a preflop range chart at PokerCoaching.com. Check it out. As you know those spots better, they become automatic to where it's like, you know, you get your squeeze and you squeeze them. Yep. You let's go. All right. So anyway, three way to the flop. Ten, five, two. You're out of position under the gun into two players, both of which could easily have a ten. But you'd... So here you have to ask, do I want to check everything? Or do I want to have some bluffs? So, a couple of things here. One, if this is where the read comes in the French pro, normally as the overcaller, they're going to be heavily weighted towards small pairs and like suited aces and suited connectors. So, I don't think this player has those hands because pocket deuces are fives. They're just going to kind of flick in the call pretty quickly pre flop. There's not much to think about there. So, you're saying because he considered squeezing pre flop, that's a hand. Fives and twos are hands that would never squeeze preflop. Exactly. Therefore, he does not have fives and twos all that often, we presume. Yes. Okay. So that, and then also the the middle position flatter being a loose passive guy that might have stuff like queen jack offsuit and just have a wider range than they should have um, is going to factor in here too. So like- They'll miss the board more just in general. Yeah. The button shouldn't really have a 10 that often. He's going to have suited 10s, but he shouldn't have ace 10 off. Shouldn't have king 10 off, queen 10 off. Like, so they don't really- He might have ace 10 off. Might decide- Ace 10 off maybe. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Ace 10 off maybe, but that would be the only one. And then the, the, the loose passive could have some 10s, but neither player probably has many over pairs. Um, and, and you do. And I have all the over pairs. You may even open fives and twos if you feel like getting frisky. Yeah. At a soft table, I'll probably open fives and deuces. And so, um, I decided, yeah, it would be, it's with all my overpair. I'm not betting hundred percent of the time here for sure. I'm also not going to check hundred percent of the time given, uh, the reads that I have. Okay. Um, and, so when we're bluffing, what cards or hands do we want to be bluffing with in general? We want to be, have something like, this is a decent like equity. And like when I get called here, like mostly my king and queen should be live outs, like ace four suited, ace three suited would be decent ones here. Having, um... Just over cards, when you get called here, you're probably going to get called by like pocket sevens or like a 10. So having outs to that is probably the most important thing. Would you rather have like queen jack of spades or this hand? It's king queen. No, um, no suits. Either or. I mean, I, I, I'm both, both, <laughs> both of them you can check. So queen jack of spades, I think is better to, you could potentially check raise that hand. Mm -hmm. Whereas king queen offsuit here doesn't really want to check raise, but it also doesn't want to check fold. So I kind of like betting the king queen offsuit and checking the queen jack suited because queen jack suited can check call here or it could also check raise. And that's because it just has more playability. There's more, yeah, like more straight and lushes and yeah. lush draws on the turn. There's a lot more turns that you can um, maneuver on. Okay, 
cool. And I, and I completely agree with all that. I think that's, that's good because exactly what you said. All right. So we decide to go for a bet. Yeah. 2,000 to 5,700. Something a lot of people do very wrong is they just always pot it into multi-way and multi-way pots. And, um, well, a lot of your content at Poker Coaching talks about how to play multi-way pots. And one of the things is to bet small for the most part. Yeah, multi-way pots, you tend to want to bet smaller. And the reason is you just get called by a stronger range because there's multiple people in the pot. So if you bet too big, the range that calls you is just going to be too strong. And so you'd have to have um, the smaller bet allows you to still bet like, you know, I hit like jack 10 here for value protection. Okay, so you bet and both people call. You probably know what you wanted to have happen. No, not ideal. <laughs> All right, well, here we go to the turn. Turn to eight of clubs, and um, I'm not going to lie. I would probably just chicken out here. I considered it, for sure. <laughs> but it's also, the low jack's just going to have hands like pocket sixes here, okay. pocket sevens. He, the low jack could have hands like fives and deuces. But do you think the button overcaller now must have something decent? The button overcaller, like, so this is the key. His, ring, his hand is pretty face up, I think, when he just calls, and it's pretty much just a pair of tens. Or ace four suited, ace three suited. Mm -hmm. Like maybe five six suited, something like that. But he didn't maybe the queen jack of spades for fun. Yeah, potentially it could be something like that. But like his range is pretty face up and it's pretty capped. Yeah. In my opinion. Like he could have pocket tens as like the one hand. I think that makes perfect sense that that's like okay, he's never folding that. But everything else, like all those other hands are gonna have a hard time calling down. And so I still have, you know, ace ten that I think can value bet here. I think uh, jacks plus second value bet here. So that, that's kind of my value is ace 10 plus jacks. Sets? Yeah, obviously like pocket fives, pocket deuces um, if I open those. And so I want to have some bluffs. Having a club here is kind of nice. And then having two over cards to a 10, I can get some ace highs to fold. Um, so I decided to get a little frisky. Well, so here would you rather bet the king queen or the queen jack or the queen nine? So probably the queen jack or the queen nine out of position, you tend to want to have more equity versus in position. You kind of want to be more polarized. So like in position, in position, I'd rather bet the king queen and check the queen jack or the queen nine, because there's more chances you can just check and take your free card, but out of position, if you check, you're still going to have to face a bet potentially. So that's why you'd want to rather bet with the queen nine and queen jack. Cause you don't want to check call with them, but you can just bet with those hands. Okay, cool. All right, so you decide to bluff it. Good. 6,500. Yep. Start to bump it up a little bit. Yep. Well, you're essentially now saying I'm going to be a little bit more polarized here, right? Yep. And I have all I have all the good value hands. You all do not have so many of them. Yeah, the low jack can have some of them, but the button is kind of... So, like, I'm already thinking once the low jack folds, I'm like, all right, this is good. This is good because uh, once the button calls, you know you're going to be jamming on a lot of rivers. Yeah. I mean, is, is there a river you're not jamming? Maybe maybe a 10 you don't jam? Yeah, maybe? probably not a 10. And probably not an ace. A lot of people would jam an ace here, I think. But I'm probably not bombing away with, like, ace, king, ace, queen that much here. Yeah, if you think about your range, we just said you're not betting. You're betting, like, the king highs and the queen highs and the jack highs. Yeah, the ace is a card, like, a lot of people over bluff here, where you're more likely to have a hand like king, queen, king, jack, queen, jack. You could have the ace 10, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of those. And like, he's still going to have like ace four suited, ace three suited, ace 10. You think you can get him off the ace four suited on an ace? No. Okay. I don't think so. Um, I think that, You shouldn't be able to. Yeah. But, uh, I should just snap. <laughs> oh, I'm not ever heard. I will say like tournaments that people care about, like a 1600 in the win, some people just drastically overfold for their tournament life when you could have it. Yeah. You know, but, but at the same time, if he has an ace on the river, yeah. he should just call. So the three comes, which does complete the ace four. Yeah, I think ace four is a hand I probably could have two suited, potentially. We didn't talk about that one as one of my bluffs. Um, he can have it as well, um, I think, here. Well, he'll fold out the ace four of diamonds on the turn, but he'll have one combination of like, yeah, clubs, ace right? Yeah, club. But that, yeah. that's one combination. We're not so worried exactly. about Exactly. So, I mean, here it's just my value range really just doesn't change. And so everything starts from value... It's always the most important thing. So, like, I would jam ace-10 here. I mean, maybe every once in a while I run into two jacks, but ace-10, I should be winning the pot here most of the time. That's something a lot of people also don't do, is that they only value bet when they're, like, really sure they have the best hand. Yep. It's okay to value shove the ace-10 here because you'll get called by king-10 and queen-10 and jack-10. Exactly. You might get called by, like, ace-3 that heroes here sometimes, or, like... Yeah. Yeah. 
You do not have to win every single time you shove in and get called. Exactly. And it certainly feels bad when you jam the ace-10. The guy's like, oh, well, Jack's call. Yeah. And then you're out. But it's okay. Sometimes you're going to lose. Yep. It is okay to lose, believe it or not. <laughs> you you win by losing. Is that true? I don't know if that's true. If you're not if you're <laughs> not value betting and getting called by better hands, you're not value betting thin enough. Simple as that. So you decide to rip it in with the king and the queen. Yeah. I like it. I mean, look, like you said, this is just a pretty easy spot to shove because you you have all the nuts. He does not. Yep. Let's run it. Yeah. So for like people that are scared or worried about bluffing in tournaments, like the easiest thing is you want to find spots to bluff when their like absolute hand strength is very low. So like here we talked about this player mostly just has a pair of tens probably. And and so like you want to be bluffing a lot in these types of spots, not when like you're not you don't really want to try to bluff people off like two pairs straights when they have to fold like these higher echelon hands but like these are kind of the spots that i think you really need to take advantage on in tournament poker when players are capped and making making sure you like kind of put them in the blender with that cap range yeah especially when you would have played all of your good hands in exactly the same way like if, yeah. if you had jacks you'd bet up let bet turn jam river yep easy so you do jam uh, he folded and he later said he had I think it was Jack Ten of Clubs. Ooh, well, or King Jack King Ten of Clubs. Maybe it was. It was a ten plus clubs. Yeah, that's a nitty fold. Yeah, I I, I haven't ran this to a solve or anything, but I gotta presume a ten is supposed to call some, right? Yeah, he, he has to call sometimes. He just doesn't have enough. Um, it it probably he probably gets to fold those sometimes because his range is literally just kind of a ten in flush draws. Like it's it's close, but it, it, I mean, it's one of those spots where again he's probably thinking I'm under bluffing, and yeah. so just kind of using that so. Um, blast them find the people that are folding too much in spots and abuse that use your value to value is there to leverage to allow you to bluff and so that's how you, your strategy be thinking about do I have a lot of value bets okay so I get to bluff a lot in these types of spots very nice so that's going to be it for today where can people follow you on the internet if they want to learn more um, I do a weekly webinar on pokercoaching.com so you can come join me live every week there you go. That's me for today. If you enjoyed this, click the like and subscribe buttons below. Also click the notification bell. And if they only have a 10, rip it in.